to the encouraging word of today. Today is Wednesday, April the 14th, and we're going to pick up here in the wonderful and encouraging word of God once again, chapter 1, picking up in verse 16. And before all these things, man, we've, we've handled a lot of things. But you ask the question, well, how can I know that these things are true? How can I know that this is what I really need? How can I know that I need to follow this one named Jesus? Well, he picks up and says these words. Verse 16. For we have not followed cunning devised fables. Cunning devised fables. These uh, elaborate stories. We're not looking at the stories of the Greeks. We're not looking at the stories of all these things. Listen, we're not... We're, we're telling you what we've seen. Notice what he says here. He says, We are not following stories when we made known unto you the power and the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He said, we, We're telling you what we saw. We saw the power of God. We saw the resurrected Lord Jesus. And that's what made them apostles, was that they saw the resurrected Lord Jesus Christ. They saw his ministry, and they saw him after he had been crucified, buried, and risen again. And they were eyewitnesses, and that's what he says here. He says, We did not follow cunning devised fables when we made known unto you the coming and power of the Lord Jesus Christ, but were eyewitnesses of his majesty. We were eyewitnesses of these things. We're not listening to what someone else said. We're telling you what we saw with our very own eyes. And what a joy it is to have the writers of the Bible writing these things down in remembrance by the power of the Holy Spirit to tell us exactly what happened so that we know we're not just following stories, we're following eyewitness accounts of the resurrected Lord Jesus. But notice what he says here in verse uh, 16. He said, not only did we show you the, the not only were we, we were eyewitnesses of his majesty, his majesty, not just his power, but his majesty, his glory. They saw the transfigured, resurrected Lord Jesus Christ in his perfect uh, state his majesty knowing that he's coming back as the king of kings and the lord of lords and we've got a god who's been raised from the dead that but that holds us by his mighty power verse 17 for he received from god the father honor and glory when there came such a voice um, to him from the excellent glory and so this is where we're talking about that transfiguration moment where they were on the top of that mount and the voice of heaven opened up and said, this is my son and whom I am well pleased. And so the question was, is, uh, you know, who should we listen to? Well, he says, this is my son in whom I am well pleased. Hear him. And so, man, we they heard this voice from heaven, this affirmation. I mean, there's not very many times when many people have heard the audible voice of God, but they heard the audible voice of God the Father in that moment on the Mount of Transfiguration, uh, which shows that, even though they are one in essence, uh, they, uh, they, they are three in person. God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And they were all there in that moment. But he picks up and says, This is my, my beloved Son in whom I am well pleased. And the voice which came from heaven we heard when we were with him in the holy mount. And so he says, This was a wonderful a wonderful experience. We could not believe the things that we were seeing. We could not believe the things that we were hearing, but we're telling you we saw them and we heard them, and they are true. But now I want you to pick up and see what he says starting in verse 19. Because how can we know all these things to be true? Not only from a spiritual experience that we may have had some point in, in our lives, no matter how grand it was, we have a even better proof. And he says these words, we also a more sure word of prophecy. We have also a more sure word of prophecy, wherein to you do well that you take heed as a light that shineth in a dark place until the day star arises in your heart, knowing this, that no prophecy of Scripture is of any private interpretation. For the prophecy came not in old time by the will of men, but holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Ghost. And so he says, when you pick up this word of God from cover to cover, you will find that the story is the same because it's written by the same author. God himself, through the Holy Spirit, by the, by the power of the Lord Jesus Christ, uh, or I should say, 
by the Father, through the Son, by the power of the Holy Spirit, you have written word of God from cover to cover, and, and the story never contradicts itself. There are challenges to different situations we find in the Scripture, but never no contradictions. And so while some stories may omit certain things and some stories may add certain things, it's from different people's perspectives by the power of the Holy Spirit bringing to remembrance so that we get a full detail of the story. And so we can reconcile everything in Scripture, but it nothing that, that we think that cannot be reconciled never diminishes, never diminishes, nor does it take away any credibility to the life, the death, the burial, and the resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Never, never. And the story from the beginning to the end, as Jesus said, and he explained unto them in the scriptures all things concerning himself, beginning at Moses and the prophets and coming all the way through. And so all of scripture, all of scripture, as 2 Timothy would say, is inspired by God, by the Holy Spirit, and that's what that means. And so he says, you want to know how you know you can follow this Lord? Well, you can know that this Jesus is real? Pick up your Bible and read it from cover to cover, and you'll find that it tells one story, one story with one Savior, all the way through. One story, one Savior, and one eternal ending. One eternal ending. And that is there's a heaven and there's a hell. And you have to choose. Am I going to follow this one? How can I know that I can follow this one? Well, you're not just getting stories. You're getting eyewitnesses' accounts of men who have encountered the living God and the risen living God, the one who died for you and rose again on that third day so that you might be able to put your faith and trust in him fully. And so I pray today you, you follow this risen Lord, this one who says, man, we've seen his power We've seen his majesty, and you can read about it from Genesis 1-1 to Revelation 22-21. It's a marvelous story that you can trust. It's a marvelous history, I should say, that you can trust. It's not just a story. It's the history of our God and his plan to save. And so go forth today mightily in the name of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, and be encouraged.